It has been nearly 40 years since Star Wars first shared with us the story of a young farm boy who defeated an entire empire with the help of some crazy space magic and a great many friends. Since that time, many individuals have added on to George Lucas's original adventure, filling the universe with countless new tales. Ever wanted to know about that robot guy that worked with Lando Calrissian? There's a comic for that. Want to know about what happened between episode 2 and 3? There are two different animated series that follow the events. What about the story behind the first Death Star plans? Thanks to the first entry in the new Star Wars Tales series, now there's a film for that. But I know what you're thinking. What about the video games? Well, stick around and I'll let you know a few buys, rents, and misses that come from a galaxy far, far away. I can't believe you two took that raving lunatic seriously. What do you think this is? <laughs> Our main game for review is Star Wars Empire at War, a real-time strategy game developed by Petroglyph Studios and released in spring of 2006. In the game, players can take charge of either the Rebel Alliance or Galactic Empire and lead them into battle, commanding individual squads and vehicles. Empire at War has two campaigns with a completion time of over 15 hours. You'll be sending your army all over the galaxy, experiencing major moments that lead up to the original Star Wars movie. <laughs> Uh, hi, excuse me, I am, uh, Crate Rocket 96 here, Jedi Master Moderator from innerfanboy.com. Hi, I'd like to address the Galactic Senate at this time. Thanks for your live feedback, Mr. 96. Although you should know, this is actually a studio, and honestly, I'm not sure who you got inside. Did we leave the door unlocked? Sorry, I'll close it. Uh, I think you should exclude the campaign mode from your review because obviously it's no longer canon thanks to that mediocre film Rogue One. I mean, come on, how do you even have a Star Wars film without lightsabers? So you want me to ignore a fictional story because it was replaced by another fictional story as canon in a fictional universe? Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. But I will say that while Empire at War isn't driven by an amazing narrative, it proves to be sufficient in creating a stable immersion for players. And that's all a fan really wants, right? Without the Star Wars polish, Empire at War would just be another mid-2000s RTS that was popular for a while. Wait, hold up! Did you say mediocre film? Yeah, so what? So? I don't think Papa Darth would like you bad-mouthing his movie. I'm a Jedi Master. Sith D D D D Darth Vader? Oh, thank Chroma Key that's over. Now as I was saying, Empire at War also has custom matches if you just want to jump into the game without worrying about all that excessive planet management. And lastly, there's also a remnant of multiplayer functionality to the game, believe it or not. In 2014, the official servers for the game were shut down, but thanks to the beautiful boys and girls over at Game Ranger Technologies, Players can use the safe third-party service to host private matches with friends or join open lobbies with fellow players from around the world. Gameplay-wise, Empire at War offers lots of variety in terms of strategy. Players can use credits earned from planetary control to buy additional soldiers, ships, facilities like barracks and space stations, defenses, and even upgrades. Finding the balance between upgrading and amassing a large army for defense can be tricky, and oftentimes the AI will take advantage and attack. When two factions meet in battle, the galactic map transitions to a top-down view of the planet in contest. The players are then allowed to command their units to move, attack, and use their special abilities. Some units have special abilities that allow them to perform specific actions. For instance, X-Wings can lock their wings and speed up while in space, and Stormtroopers can crouch for extra cover. While each faction has different units they can build, the game is balanced to allow both factions with strategies to counter every unit type. The game also features heroes and villains from the original Star Wars trilogy for the player to command. Many of these characters are extremely powerful and difficult to defeat. Speaking of difficulty, I found myself challenged by the AI at medium difficulty. On hard, I found the AI near impossible to defeat. Even with a team of human players, we found ourselves staring at our space station blow up a few too many times. To sum it all up, Star Wars Empire at War is a fun time that shows some age on the eyes, but holds up under the hood. 
If you're looking to experience massive battles based on the original Star Wars trilogy, you can't go wrong with this game. I give it a score of 4 out of 5 Death Star Explosions. The current listing for this game on Steam is $19.99 full price. It also comes with an expansion that adds a third pirate faction with their own campaign, units, and heroes, some of which draw from the more obscure Expanded Universe cast. This game is frequently on sale, so keep an eye out if 20 is looking a little steep for you. Before we wrap up, I have a few quick hits for you to check out. The first being Star Wars Battlefront 2. For 10 bucks, you could have what I consider to be the best Star Wars action game out there. While the Empire War has players commanding, Battlefront 2 drops players into the battle to fight alongside their favorite faction from across the entire Star Wars saga. The game features a massive amount of AI-controlled soldiers that fill out every battlefield and fight alongside players. The game's multiplayer also requires third-party servers like Game Ranger for it to work. This game is a definite buy. Next is the 2015 reboot title, Battlefront. While the game felt fairly absent of content during its original release, its sheer visual beauty can't be denied. If you want the quickest way to visit the Star Wars universe, rent Battlefront. It is part of the EA Access subscription now, meaning you can rent the game for 5 bucks a month. And finally, if you're looking for one of the pinnacles of Western RPGs, check out 2003's Knights of the Old Republic. It came in third for IGN's Game of the Decade, so I cannot stress enough how great this game is. The story takes place 3,000 years before the original trilogy and allows its narrative and gameplay to really explore the potential of the Star Wars property. You can buy it on Steam or the App Store for $10. That's right, this 40 hour game can be played on an iPhone without any ads or microtransactions in sight. If it wasn't already clear, buy this game. That's it for this episode, be sure to leave a comment telling us what your favorite Star Wars games are, and also check out our other great solar entertainment videos. Thanks for watching.